Hi, my name is Paul. I'm with Landis Technologies, and today we're going to take a look at the Landis Attendant Console for Microsoft Teams. In this video, we're going to look at all the features of the product, show you how to use it, and give you everything you need to get started. Let's take a look. Once again, this video will be more focused on the features and functionality and how to operate the attendant console for Microsoft Teams. Uh, down below is a link to our getting started guide that will walk you through more the technical side of creating a trial, signing in, getting started, and so on. Now one thing that I do want to mention, this application is built using Microsoft's APIs, uh, meaning that all of the call function functions and handling of calls is all done right within your team's environment. So the setup and getting started of the product is incredibly easy. Uh, you're going to navigate to ac.landis.cloud uh, in your browser. You're going to give admin consent to the application. And then you're going to sign in with a Teams user and start taking calls. Incredibly simple. Um, so for more on the setup and configuration, you can click the Getting Started Guide down below. Uh, that includes some video and instructions on how to do that. But today, we're going to look more at the call handling and operation of the attendant console. So once you're at uh, the ac.landis.cloud, you'll see the sign-in screen. We can click the sign-in button, and using our Microsoft credentials, single sign-on, it'll sign us into the attendant console. Uh, and there you can see we're signed in. So just to give you an overview of some of the panels that you're looking at, and as I bring calls into this uh, attendant console, you'll see more uh, things light up and you'll see some uh, more features here. On the left-hand side is where we're going to do call handling from. And so as we bring calls in, you'll be able to see ringing calls, calls on hold, etc. Here in the middle, we can see our address book as we search for a name. The search results populate there instantly and we can see them um, and easily sift through the search results. We can also click on any contact and see more in-depth information on this contact. Their name, department, location, uh, especially if you have multiple locations and larger organizations, sometimes that information is very helpful. Also here at the bottom, we have a calendar icon uh, within the contact card for any of our contacts. This will display the Outlook information for that we have access to for that uh, user. And of course, this is all based on the permissions that I have within Outlook, whether that's read-only permissions or full calendar rights. Um, but this allows me to see if that person is on vacation, if they're in a meeting, or if they are available to take a call. We can also click on the hierarchy icon there. That just shows uh, how they relate to other contacts in the environment. So who their manager is, who their assistants are, who else is in their department. That information can also be very helpful. If we're looking to transfer a call to Derek, we see that he's not available. We can look at the company hierarchy to see who else may be qualified to take that call. And then on the far right hand side, we have our favorite groups. Uh, we have uh, groups that we can organize into any list that we feel is helpful. We can create just regular favorite groups or uh, groups for a sales department or a specific location. Any type of organization that we feel is helpful to us, we can organize those contacts. Of course, we have our contact search right here as we saw, but this is just our favorites so that when we're looking for those frequently contacted users, we can quickly find them and transfer calls to them. All right, so let's get started with the call handling aspect of this. Um, I'm going to bring a call in and you'll notice a call starting to ring here in the top left hand corner. And I'm going to start by doing a basic blind transfer. We're very, very big on the one click transferring. That's very important. So we see a call that's ringing here. I'm going to answer that call. And with one click, I'm going to transfer it to one of my contacts. The call starts ringing. And as soon as they answer, we see it disappear, meaning that transfer has been completed. Incredibly simple to do a transfer. That comes back to that one click call transfer. So I did that pretty quick. Let me do another transfer or two and kind of show you some of the other options that you have around call transferring. Once again, we see a ringing call. <clears throat> we can answer that. Drops down to a current call and we can see the caller ID and we can clearly see that we are connected to this caller. We can see a little timer there indicating how long the call has been in process. The icons here are pretty obvious, mute, unmute. Uh, we can put the call on hold using the pause button. It would drop down to the bottom of our screen here. We can still see the information for that call. 
um, the, the caller ID and how long they've been on hold. And of course, we can easily retrieve that back up to a live call. The transfer you just saw me do a moment ago was a blind transfer, meaning it's going to ring through to our extension. If they do not answer, it would just go to their voicemail like a, like a standard experience. We can also do a safe transfer. This operates much the same, but instead of the call just going to their voicemail, if they happen to ignore or not answer the call, it would remain within reception's control. So this is ringing that user. We're just going to reject that. And now we see at the bottom of our screen here, a failed safe transfer, but the call is still there and I can still have control over that call. So if we have a caller that maybe it's a, an important matter or it's an important client and they are not expecting to hit voicemail, we can use safe transfer to guarantee that if this transfer is not successful, that we still have control of that call back and we can do something else with it. We can ask them if they want voicemail, we can send it to another contact. So in this case, I'm going to retrieve this failed safe transfer and now I'm speaking with that caller again. Another very common scenario is a consult transfer where we want to speak with our contacts before we pass a call through to them. So I'm going to select consult transfer. I'm going to click on the contact that I want to consult transfer with. It will now put the caller on hold while I am calling that user. As they accept the call, I'm now connected to them and I can fill them in on all the details of this call, who is waiting for them and ask them if they want to take the call. And if they agree that they will take the call, I just press that consult transfer icon again. It is now completing that transfer through to the user. And as soon as they answer the call, it disappears and indicates to me that that call has been successfully transferred to, to that user. All right, so let me bring that call back in just to show you another option or two. Um, call starts ringing here, we'll answer it. The other option that you have is the ability to add a user or add participant. This is just like it would be in a, in a Teams meeting. We're going to add someone into the phone call, they would be joined in, and three people would be on the call at once. And we could add more people. We could continue to add users to the call. And then of course we could drop out at any point and the rest of the users would be able to continue the conversation. Uh, and it doesn't end the entire conference. So uh, just a regular conference feature. And just to highlight again, the, the ease of call handling, we can easily see calls ringing and we can easily see multiple calls ringing at once. So we see a call ringing up uh, at the top there and we see a second one come in. So I'm gonna answer this one first. I can speak with this caller. I can click answer on the second one and it'll automatically answer it and push the other one down to hold. I can, with one single click, toggle those calls and uh, switch the order in which they, you know, so that I'm talking to the other person. One thing that's very important with call handling, especially if you're at a reception desk where things are busy, a lot of calls happening, being able to visually see what's happening at all times is very important. To avoid the confusion of, you know, where did that call go? Did I hang up on them? Did they get transferred? Being able to see all of that information, whether it's a ringing call, someone I'm connected to, calls that are waiting on hold, calls that are either failed transfer or in the middle of transfer, we can see all of that information right here on the left-hand side of our screen. Okay, so that's the basics of the answering call. So we're gonna move on to some of the other features here um, uh, re revolving around the contacts. So as you saw, I searched a name and the contacts uh, loaded here. This is just searching your regular organization contacts, uh, like your team's contacts, your global address list. Um, so you simply type a name and those results will populate here in the search window. You'll notice some other options here. Uh, I've been transferring calls, uh, as you've seen, just by clicking on the phone icon to initiate a transfer. Of course, if I do not have a live call, I can call that person just by clicking on their uh, phone extension there. We can also uh, initiate an IM with them. This is using regular Teams messaging, uh, an IM to that user to start chatting with them if you'd like. We can also click on the menu options for that contact and we'll see a, a whole list of other options that we have. Uh, first of all, if there's other numbers listed on their account, we can see those here and we can transfer phone calls to those other numbers if we care to. A classic example is a mobile phone or a cell phone. If someone has a cell phone listed on their account, we can easily transfer a call directly to their mobile device. Of course, they're starting chat, opening an email, an email callback reminder. This is a very important feature that is very helpful. If you're speaking with a caller and 
they don't want to leave a voicemail, but they would like a call back from someone, or they give you specific instructions to pass along to that contact. That can always be problematic. Of course, now we need to remember it, or we need to write it down on a sticky note, or type it up in an email. But using email callback reminder, while we have this person still on the line, we can just click this button for any user, and it'll populate an email to that contact already filled in with all the information from the call that we're connected to. So Derek sees the information that he needs to return this call. Uh, they called it this date, this time, this is the number to call them back. Everything that Derek needs to return this call is included, with this, uh, included within this email. All I need to do is hit send and I know that he has the information that he needs. Um, this is a regular email of course so if I wanted to add additional notes, uh, alternate callback number or anything like that before I hit send I can easily do that. All right, um, that covers contacts pretty clearly. I, there, there's not a lot of complexity around it. Of course, the favorite groups over here, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in a moment. One other thing that you have the ability to do is change the layout of the screen and you can get uh, very specific with how you want your layout to look. This uh, attendant console adapts very nicely to any type of screen whether it's a widescreen device, a tablet, a smaller laptop, you can really organize the panels to your liking so that it fits your, fits your eye, fits your screen, and makes you as efficient as possible. Um, but in, on top of that, you can add and remove certain panels uh, as you have a need for them. So if we go under Options, top right-hand corner, we can go down to Layout, and we have a lot of different options for what columns we want to appear where. I'm going to switch to a different screen view just to highlight a few additional features that the product offers. I'm going to apply this and it's going to uh, refresh my screen here. And now you notice a, a few other columns over here on the right hand side. So in this instance, I have my incoming calls, I have my contact search, I have my favorite groups, contact card here at the bottom, and now I've added a screen pop option that shows uh, a tie-in to, in this case, it's our accounting software, or actually I believe this is Dynamics 365. It uses Power Apps to connect to a number of different databases. So essentially any database that Power Apps hooks into, you can provision that data to show here on the, on the screen as a call is being handled. Um, so if there's any capability or any um, need for screen pop, a tenant console for Teams has that built in. Another thing you'll notice is a panel here at the bottom with what we call quick access shortcuts. And these are basically, think of these as a favorites bar for a reception user to configure buttons for any type of task that is helpful to them. Uh, it may be calling a phone number uh, that is not in our address book, like we see uh, a, a different office or a different company, someone that's not in our address book. Uh, it could be opening a web page or opening a saved email template. Um, so there's a, a, a variety of different things that those shortcut buttons can be configured for. But anything that the receptionist is doing repeatedly throughout the day, they can create a button to take care of that task. We can even assign it a keyboard shortcut uh, to make it really easy for us. And of course, uh, as you saw me change the layout, I can easily go back and if those extra columns, if those extra windows are not helpful to me, I can eliminate it and just see the basics of what is needed for myself. Just keep it simple. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the options, um, but uh, just to highlight a few things, you can look through the options. Everything is very self-explanatory. Setting up of your favorite groups and having it, it's basically like save searches where you can have it say, uh, search a certain title or a certain location. Or if you, of course you can have just random lists of contacts in a favorites list. Um, if you are configuring caller ID information uh, for the screen pop, you can easily do that there. Um, transfer options allow you to set your default mode on answer. So if uh, I have mine set to blind transfer, meaning every time I answer a call, if blind transfer is the transfer mode that I use most often, it will automatically have the call in blind transfer mode and ready for me to simply click on a contact to complete that transfer. Um, that's what allows us to enable that one-click call transferring. Um, so you can set that according to your liking. And of course, if there's any transfer modes that are not helpful to you, you can uh, minimize them and make them invisible so they're not in your way on the screen. You can, of course, set up your devices, make uh, practice calls. 
you can easily set up your quick access shortcuts that we talked about just a moment ago um, on the quick access shortcuts menu here. You can even set keyboard shortcuts for all other actions within the attendant console to make it easy to answer, un uh, hang up, transfer, and so on. So uh, some operators prefer to operate with their keyboard as opposed to the mouse. Uh, you can easily do that. And just another note, this is fully configured for touch screen. So if you are operating on a touch screen device, there's no problem there either. And then lastly, you have the ability to export the configuration file. So if you do have multiple users, you can set up a tenant console the way you like it, export the file so that others can import it, and just save them a little bit of time getting their settings in place. Well, that's pretty much everything we're going to cover today. Uh, the, as you can see, the product is very integrated into Teams very easy to operate and we, we put a high importance on the simplicity and efficient call handling uh, of calls in teams. You can reach out to sales at lannistechnologies.com if you have more questions or if you wanted to uh, get pricing or uh, you know, information on starting a trial or anything like that. Once again, you can click the link below for our getting started guide. That getting started guide will give you everything you need to set up a trial, sign in, and start using the product. And of course, that will also uh, activate a free 30-day trial so you can test it out fully in your, in your environment prior to purchasing the product. Thanks again for watching. We appreciate it, and we hope to talk to you soon.